who we have a very special guest today, and he's going to say a few words just to remind us all, not that we need reminding, the kind of corruption that we are dealing with. with our oh, that's me done, so without any further ado, I'll introduce Herman to have a few words. I'll see all know Herman. Uh, we all know Herman. We all are Herman. I owe everybody money, that's why. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so very prominent. Well done, eh? How you yeah. And me is Maudini Hain. I, uh, I was down in Port Beach there today, just beside Anna Gasson. Beautiful, beautiful place. It's down playing with the kids. Had a great laugh. And driving up here this evening, we are very blessed. If you've ever been in many other countries, we live in a, we are blessed to live in a very beautiful country in which there's a very strong national and community spirit. I know where I am in County Louth and where I'm from, Derry and Donegal. You wouldn't meet better people. Really, really decent, honest, kind-hearted people who would help you in times of need, wherever you're stuck. And uh, we have people who have been protesting for a long time, like yourselves, can sometimes get downhearted about what has taken place in our country. Why, how our country has been flooded by huge number of unvetted males and makes our country much more dangerous, dangerous for our children. But keep your hopes up, keep it going. When the history of Ireland is written, it'll be small groups of ordinary people or extraordinary people like yourselves who will be remembered for having made the difference and having stood up and spoken the truth to everybody when it wasn't very popular. All these politicians egged on by prostitute media, the whore media of Dublin, who despise and hate our country, hate our culture, hate our language, everything that makes us unique as a people. We have been in this land for thousands and thousands of years, those who came before us, and here we are, the end of a lineage of thousands of years of people who have struggled through much greater hardship that we, than, that we have ever experienced, that we could just be here and live and be with our kids and educate our children. So you are like being almost the point of a spear, standing up, speaking truth to power and what power we have. Mention the names there, the Brady's here, the guy who owns a hotel, Banty, one man, who's, what, he cleared 16 million last year? One man cleared, of course, in one of his hotels up in Carrick there, was it four years ago? A young woman was raped by one of the guys staying in his hotel. Let's not kid ourselves among all the lies that we hear in the press. Last year, there were 305,000 new PPS numbers given out in, out in Ireland. 237 thousand of those were given to non-Irish nationals. You wouldn't believe it, but 69,000 were given out to people born in Ireland. That's not Irish people, that's people born in Ireland. But let's just say, for simplicity, they're all Irish people. 69,000. 69,000 were given to people from Ukraine. Can anybody think of the, what are the main differences between those two blocks, blocks of Irish people, 69,000, and the 69,000 Ukrainians. Anybody? The, the only difference was Ukrainians have an automatic right to medical care, autom automatic right to be provided housing and health care and uh, education for the kids. And ourselves, we, we don't have an automatic right to uh, health care. We don't have an automatic right the state's going to give us a house. It's nuts. So at the minute, we're in a situation where Anybody and anybody who lands in Dublin airport, was it 61% of them who suddenly have lost their passport? So all these guys, all these people landing in Ireland. So it's unbelievable that while you get up in the morning to go out to work, to provide for your family, but to build up a better country as your parents and grandparents did, that you're given to this country, build, as your parents build up this country, and these freeloaders, by the encouragement of the government, the politicians, and the politicians' friends, people like Banty, they are creaming these scavengers, really. They're living off the taxpayers of Ireland, these fat slob owners 
of these hotels who will sacrifice and compromise the safety and the security of our communities that they can make money. They really are the scum of the earth. Yeah. That, they, that they would do that. That they would do that to Irish people, to their neighbours. They do that to their neighbours and to their friends and to their own family. They, they sell out and they bring in to our towns and villages all around the country. And like, if you think it's only happening in my Cross, you would see, you, you go up to Donegal, a grandparent, my grandfather's from uh, Balbuffet. So you walk out in Balbuffet, Irish people walking. We're a minority. Yeah. Yeah. We're a minority. Yeah. Like 20 years ago, it was all Irish people. We emigrated. Now we are a minority in our own towns. Yeah. So we've got to keep on speaking up, speaking out, telling all our friends and neighbours about what these people are doing to our country and to our communities and make clear it's completely unacceptable and to the politicians they will keep on doing flooding our country with all these unvetted potentially violent men all these economic freeloaders into our country they will keep on doing it when they have no reason to change so these politicians use the power and I, I grew up in Derry, right? And of course, when I was 18 or whatever, I voted Schinner because I was Republican and Nationalist. But that party have changed 180%, yes. right? Yes. Now it's all... Actually, just coming here, talking about... I know Mid-Ulster up in the north, the people who are letting out their houses and stuff, second and third houses to all these people from Eastern Europe and Afghanistan and Pakistan, it's all the Schinners. All the so-called great Republicans, Republican, now they call themselves Socialist Republicans, which means now, which, if I can translate it, means they're anti-nationalist, they hate our country, our culture, and they, where their policy used to be Brits out, now it's Brits out, everybody else in. That's all it is. Brits out, everybody else in, Sinn Féin, and of course Fianna Fáil, Fianna Gael, all that, all, all their policies are just abort and import, right? Yeah. But they, they will keep on doing it unless we replace these politicians. They are going to replace us as a people. Do you know what? I was amazed today. You know Sinn Féin, no, sorry, the RTE, or to, or, I don't think I'm saying it right, or, or to E, if I can get it right, in a South Dublin way, that uh, I was amazed and nearly fell off. I wouldn't say, I wasn't riding a horse, but if I had a, I would have fallen off the horse. Uh, it was... Uh, I seen the first article that was actually true, an RTE talking about how much we give the EU every year, right? Because I've been, a, I had a bit of a di dispute and emails, letters flying between me and RTE News Crowd for a few years. So in 2021, now it's been on their website for a few years now that they were saying we're a net contributor for three years and for the last three years we give a net contribution of roughly 350 million euro. It's a complete pack of lies, but I was actually very shocked today to find that they've actually, after all this time, published the correct results. That in 2021, we gave a contribution of 3.6 billion euro to the EU budget, and that was a net 1.1 million euro to the EU budget. And we're also a net contributor to the EU budget since 2013. No, I can see some of their faces. This, this guy's turning very nerdy very quickly. But we're a net contributor to the EU budget since 2013. And even that's not quite the truth. Because they, EU boats have plundered Irish waters. Our national waters, which should be for the good of Irish people. Since we joined the EU, they have taken out 215 billions worth of fish out of our national waters. And it's all for the good of French, Spanish, Portuguese, fishermen and all that there. If that was processed here, it would be worth a lot more even. So yeah, it's process a, value. Yeah. Is a lot more. Yeah. And then they also, you may remember 2013 or whatever, they imposed 64 billion <coughs> bank debt on ourselves, on the Irish taxpayer, right? Our, we, our children and our grandchildren will be paying that off. But uh, as I said, nearly fell off the horse. Couldn't believe it that RTE, they must be feeling the pressure. 
Why are they feeling under pressure? Because people rightly are refusing to pay their RT license because it's so corrupt. Isn't that fantastic? Yeah. They're feeling the heat. Let them feel the heat more. Let them continue to feel the heat. Yeah, do you know what? Yeah, they just don't feel that that, that kind of monthly wage slip coming in under the door every month. So, oh, we better start being a bit more careful about what we say because uh, the people are getting a little bit restless out in the, out in the country. I know. So it's like they, they are feeling the heat. People are refusing to pay the RT license fee. And uh, so I would suspect that why all of a sudden after all these years of whatever, are they telling the people the truth, basic truth, on regards immigration? Now, I was, oh yeah, they, they, they went into panic mode there last week because there, like, there was a protest outside the doll. But they're very, very slow. Do you ever see the RTE? Do you remember when those two guys up in Sligo? Remember, was it last year? A year and a half ago? The two guys, they were decapitated and castrated, right? And I know a neighbor of, of the older man, and it's actually worse than you would read in the news, that it was all, it was all to do with, oh yeah, Irish homophobia is all, all, but all the problem was Irish men. And it was the Catholic Church and Irish Catholics were going around decapitating uh, homosexuals. And then suddenly, when they discovered it was a, a, a Kurdish Muslim, I'm not sure it was a Kurdish Iraq or whatever, a Muslim who had, who'd, who had done it just after it had been in the mosque, that uh, suddenly they all went quiet. Look at what happened there in... Maybe it was a cry for help. A, 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 cry, a cry for help, <laughs> like we had in Balina. There, so two weeks in Balina, a, a Polish guy, I think it was 34... Like order decapitation. Uh, he, like, up in Balina, now this guy had killed a guy two years ago. Yeah. Killed a, a, a traveller with a knife. He killed him, right? Got off. He was charged and got off on that. And now there, two weeks ago... He was out with a knife, threatening to kill people again. But, but did you see how quietly that went, that went in the media? There was hardly a whisper about it. Like it was online for a few hours one night, and then suddenly, complete radio silence. And I, I, I don't know. Uh, I don't have a TV in the house. I don't, not only do I not buy a license, I, don't, I wouldn't even put RT in my house. So I'm not sure if it was on the news, but it certainly, even online, disappeared completely. So you can see... The, the influence of the uni party, the, the political class, whose views on immigration are virtually all the same. They're, they're all, virtually all, except a few independents, they're all in favour of mass immigration. They don't care how much it's going to cost you, millions and billions every year. They don't care about the, the attack on your security. Is this the man here? Okay. That uh, They don't care about the, the cost Taxpayers have to pay. They don't care about the loss of your security. But it's great, and I'm very pleased to see that because people are refusing to pay their license fee, well, I hope that, that I'm sure, has contributed to the reason why uh, they're starting to tell people the truth. Hopefully that will also be reflected in time or in that matter of immigration. So that's enough of the sob stories. The good, good news is that uh, I am... Uh, I'm running. He, he, here's Herman, the, the salesman, suddenly. Uh, I'm exactly. I'm running as a candidate uh, for the Irish Freedom Party in the European elections in Ireland North, which is basically, the, I think the official name is, for the European Parliament elections of June next year, Midlands Northwest. So I'll be running as a candidate. I will be looking to cause as much trouble, get into as many debates or Barneys, as I can, and uh, I'll be raising the issue of uncontrolled, unvetted immigration into our country. The financial cost put on our people, the, the security cost put on our communities, and how we can't afford the EU anymore. And do you know what? Bottom line, it comes down to a very simple question. Are Irish people good enough to make our own laws, decide our own destiny? and control our own borders. Are we good enough? I believe that we are. 
I'm sure that you agree with me. So let's pull the boss. Let's put up the good fight. And I would encourage the good people of Coot Hill to come out. You've been fantastic to come out here every week for such a long time. You're a great example to the rest of the country. So I'll do the clap and thank you very much on behalf of so many people outside. Thank you. Lecture, yeah. Go over there. Are you going to forget about it? <laughs> well, I've actually, I'm actually, uh, no, I, I'm not. Let, let me tell you, I'm there working as a press officer for the last 14 years in uh, in Brussels. I've been there for a long, very long time. Actually, a boy I used to work with when he became an MEP he was asked the question: Is this going to make you into a campaign guzzling, uh, a champagne guzzling? Cigar smoking. He says, what do you mean? I've always been like that. <laughs> no, I don't even drink. Right. Thank you very much for your, uh, your warm uh, well, uh, invitation. Very kind of Thank you. Just, uh, again, thank you very much. But if anybody, any individual questions you'd like to ask Herman, Herman apart from Teresa? <laughs> <laughs> the rabble, the rabble riser of Kurt Hill. You see, the thing is, yeah, here, go on, take it. The thing is, we'd like to know... What is this? It's a megaphone. Oh, well, we, we would. For libel yeah, well, we we would like to know if there's any advice you could give us as to make people aware of really what's going on, or why do you think that people are so asleep with the whole thing that's going on? Why do you think? I think because they've been lied to hand over fist. They haven't been told the truth of what's going on in Ireland by by the media. You know. When I say it, there's a unit party, the political class, the media class, and, and the NGO class. NGOs get 8% of all of the complete Irish budget. You have the, the, you have the political class, all the parties, all the main parties are in favour of mass immigration. There's not, there's not a single party in the doll who wants to put an end to it, right? Uh, the, the media, now I used to be a journalist, I, I was a teacher before, then I became a journalist because I like... Well, I brought up very Republican. I was always make Ireland a better so place. I. Right? Always about mm. making Ireland a better place. Yeah. When I was a teacher, I became a teacher. Oh, you can influence 30 boys in the classroom. Then I think, well, if you become a journalist, you can influence more people. That's why I became a journalist, mm -hmm. to be straight out. And, uh, but in my experience, the, now, there was a party in the 70s called Sinn Féin, the Workers' Party, who changed from being nationalist to being anti-nationalist. Mm -hmm. And Sinn Féin sadly have, have followed them. They, the Stickies used to be the great ideological enemy because they were Marxist, internationalist. But over the decades, Sinn Féin followed them. And that's why they have the, they're now pro-mass immigration. And, uh, but in my experience, and knowing so many journalists, they're extremely left-wing. They hate our culture. They're basically hibernophobes. Hibernophobes, they hate our, but I'll say, I'll get off a tirade about journalists. No, you just have to use social media as much as you can. Write all letter to the press, see if you can try to get it in. Ring up the local radio and tell your family and friends. And having protests out like this, that people can see it in, in, in public, that, that people can see it and watch it and hear about it. And the press have to write about it. And actually, do you know what? Sometimes you have to be a red pain ass. To get to for uh, to that. be noticed. So <laughs> this guy, Mr. Brady, this guy, Mr. Brady, and his neighbours will notice that he is selling his people out. He is selling out the community of Coot Hill for short-term profit and long-term loss for the people of Coot Hill. So just keep on doing what you're doing. Yeah. Do you think that the government is getting backhanders themselves? To, to do this, to bring them in, or they have to be getting something. They're well, seemingly, uh, I was just reading as I was coming here about the EU, uh, EU migration pact, and I, I'm sure that every MEP, oh yeah, I've had to do some research for this thing, right? Mm. So when it comes to rural Ireland, for example, every MEP, right, across the, in the rest of Europe, you have all these different parties, and they have an ideological spectrum and some will vote for some and some are against but in Ireland like the Nature Restoration Act which it has to do with mm. kind of re-wetting bogs and land and stuff like that there every Irish MEP voted for it there was no there's no diversity of thought mm. right and other things about anything to do with carbon tax 
all the Irish MEPs vote for it. So that makes your, your milk, your meat, your petrol for your car, your heat and oil for, for your house. Uh, it makes it more expensive. I was just looking up another thing there last week, which was the Energy Conservation and Building Act. Once again, everybody now has a requirement they have to retrofit and insulate their house, or will be very soon. Every Irish MEP voted for it. So it's like a, it's a uni party here, and it's a uni party over in Brussels as well. So I aim to be a fox among the chickens. I'm going to upset them as much as I can. No, but back to, but back to the original question. As this man said, everybody has to be their own journalist and be creative and do videos and let people know uh, what you're thinking. Walk along, do a video and let, let other people see it. And more people were, will see it. You can see, look, I said there, was it last summer that the future of Ireland is going to be nationalist? Which, this is just the beginning of the rebirth of Irish nationalism. It started in the late 19th century, 1880s, groups of people discovered the importance of their language, the culture, dance, the way they dressed. And then a few de decades afterwards, you had 1916. And a few years after that, you had the start of a uh, uh, 26 county uh, free state or whatever. And then in 1949, you had declared a republic over at least part of our country anyway. But you have a rebirth of nationalism, and you can see there that 75% uh, of people are opposed to more immigration in Ireland. And oh, this is that well. all right about the 75%. Yeah. But it doesn't look like that with only the few people. No, no, but you know what? We have to. This is a country we live in, and people are aware what their neighbours think. And uh, it takes people with extra cajones to. I, I didn't. Sorry, didn't mean. <laughs> say, <laughs> say, I shouldn't have said that to a woman. Yeah. But it takes a small number of hard headed people to stand yes. up and speak the truth in public. Yeah. So you're, you're, you're the people like that. Yeah, yeah. Maybe in the polling booth, when they're in their own secrecy, they'll do the right thing. Yeah. You know, when they're in there, when they're out there on the streets or up there and you're, and you're talking to somebody, oh, I, I, I fully support what you do. I say, where are you? Where have you eat? You know, fully support you. Well, oh, geez, I can't get in there, you know, business and all that. Yeah. So maybe, hopefully, I mean, the next election will tell a story. Yeah. You know, so are they all full of shit, or are they really... Do you want me to put the, do you want this? No, I don't want <laughs> <laughs> No, absolutely, like, we just have to tell people, look boys, we are at a very, we are at a very important juncture in Irish history, right? What has taken place is, a, without any hint of exaggeration, it is, it, this is the second plantation of Ireland. Of course. Right? We had the first in the 17th century, mm. like the plantation of Ulster. Do you think that did us any favours? We spent the, the next three centuries afterwards trying to undo the plantation of Ulster, right? And now this is the new plantation. And they are colonising our country. And it's not just people coming from outside, it's that you have a major, you have almost completely, almost com the complete political class of Ireland are all in favour of the new plantation. But we, and you, well, what's what you're doing? You're standing up, you're speaking truth to power, and we're saying, no, this is Ireland, I am Irish, this is our country, Ireland belongs to us, and no one comes into our country and resides here without our consent. Because what is happening you! is colonization without our consent, and we're not going to take it. Yeah, we're not and these politicians, <sighs> Uh, yeah, we'll just leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> There's children here. How do you think their minds have been changed to think this way? Come on, Brent. Here, here's no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like? Yeah. yeah. What, 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 what happened to people that? People that voted for Sinn Féin all their lives, you know, yeah. for yeah. all of a sudden, and the funny thing is too, is Sinn Féin have this theory that they're going to walk back into the next election. I, I, 
to me, and most of us here who are Sinn Féin voters will never vote for Sinn Féin again, never. ever. No. I mean, and we'd even campaign the opposite way. So, uh, how do I don't know what the... F- as, as, as Brenda says, what, where's the turn? Why did it turn? What happened to them? Well, uh, their polls is, they've been basing their whole, for the last four years, on trying to get voters in South Dublin, Dunleary. Yeah. That's who they're targeting now, because they think we're their power base, and we'll always vote Sinn Féin, we'll never leave them, because we kept them going when no one else would vote for them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they've been targeting them, and these policies are ta- policies that they will vote for up in them areas but they're not the policies the yeah th- that's anyone replies to a polls living in them areas yeah, yeah. we don't reply to polls never did yeah. ordinary Sinn Féin voters never replied to them but yeah. they'll yeah. get a hop when it comes you to the polls I, I, just as you were the saying the polls yeah, yeah. as you were saying that I was thinking they've changed from following the vote of you know the snapper what was yeah, yeah. Who, who, who was a writer Roddy Doyle yeah. they've moved from Roddy Doyle to Ross O'Carroll Kelly <laughs> and it's Saoirse in uh, in Rathdown. Yeah. Uh, that's whose vote they're chasing now. Yeah, they think Irish working class people, Republican people, nationalists, they're all in the bag. They can be taken for granted. Mm. So we'll go chasing uh, the, the, the Searshes uh, uh, or Sorsha uh, of, of, of Rathdown. And like, l- look at all the things. Did you see your... Actually, I, I, I just seen there last night or so a thing about uh, Mary Lou MacDonald, who's an old... Fem- uh, there she was in a hijab. Yeah. Uh, mm. it, uh, yeah. Like, they hate anything to do with uh, Irish Catholic or anything, but she's happy to do a hijab and welcome people. Like, the cheek of it, like, they have in Croke Park. And, uh, like, if you can see the, what has happened, the imposition of that culture across the, the rest of Europe, the increase, the rape she had all across Northern England. If you can see the increase in violence, actually, I met. A, I was at a conference there a few days ago in Brussels, and I met a few Swedish lecturers, professors, and they were telling me about the number. There were three murders, right, the day before. There were three murders, and there's so many hundreds of bombs every year in Sweden. But yeah, we know nothing about it because we never see it in our TV. The only good thing is that people who used to who actually believe what they see in RT, older people is, are, are getting less, and younger people who rely more on online media and they see a, a, a greater diversity, well, they, they can see the truth uh, easier than, it, than anybody who's reliant on RT. But I'm great, I used to call it the kid, the, st- the sticky station, uh, RT, the sticky station, always anti nationalist, they always hounded any nationalist out of RT. So I never had any time for them. So keep up not paying your license fee for the sticky station and keep on campaigning. You're doing the right thing. And when the history of this country is written, you more than deserve your place. Gora Margotza and Slanis Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. ...of anywhere that's going to be planted, the same as they're trying to do to this town, because we need everyone to come together. It's important not to do with politicians, not to do with politicians, it's people coming together. Because that's what's going to stop it. Political parties aren't going to stop anything, so they're not. They don't care about another political party. They don't care about anything, but they care about people. When they see people coming together, that's when they freak out. And we're going to get everyone together and try our damnedest, because that's what has to happen in this country. It's the only way that's going to stop it. And this is just a small thing that we've done. It's to help people that want to, people that want to start a protest. It gives them information on what we've done and where we've been going, mistakes we've made and stuff like that. And it's important that everyone comes together and stands up. If you can go support the community somewhere else, go support them. Because they'll need their support, we need their support. And that's the reality of it. So that's there. If anyone sends in an e- to the email, Cotill concerned, isn't it? What is it? Community group. You all have it anyway, because he's all sent in the group. So send in the group and we'll send you a copy of it. If you know of anyone anywhere that wants help, send it to them. It might be a benefit, it might not, but at least we're trying to do something. Because at the end of the day, if you know something's wrong and you don't do something, how could you ever face your children? At least every one of the person that's here is out face, standing up. Because we know that if anything goes wrong, at least we can say to our children, look, we tried our best and we've done our best. And that's the reality of it. So. In the house. <laughs> yeah, just on, the, on that uh, starter pack, uh, we've got, we sent out a few people. I didn't mention. Oh, we've got great response. Yeah. Great response. I mean, people are saying it's exactly how a protest should be run. So if anybody, if anybody knows, if anybody that needs it, any part of the country, uh, we're getting...
Pity we weren't selling it, but... <laughs> <laughs> no, but look, oh, everyone every we sent you out is received very well. Um, Loretta put in a lot of effort here in, in writing this. And yeah. It's very well written. We had people working, uh, graphic designers and stuff working on it. It looks good, it looks slick, but that's irrelevant because the most important thing is the information in it. Yeah. And the information's all good. But all these men here have to look... I have to answer to the women and children. Any man. <laughs> and our mothers. <laughs> <laughs> and our mothers. All right. 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 All right.